Hi, welcome back. We're looking at discrete time convolution. So in this video, we're only going to work on one example, and there will be other examples in other videos. Now, um, what I've got here is a linear time invariant system, okay, which we draw like this, and I've got an input x of n, and I've got an impulse response h of n, and I want to find the output. Okay, so before we get into the you know the actual mechanics of convolution, remember what the significant result from the previous video was, and it says that the output of any linear time invariant system is the input convolved with the impulse response, and that convolution is this mathematical operation. It's a, an infinite sum of products x of k times h of n minus k. Right? So this example is going to be mathematical. You know, this is a mathematical operation, but let's not lose sight of the engineering here. The engineering is this, that if I, I'm given a system, maybe a circuit, okay, maybe a mechanical system, and I just conduct a little experiment, I put an impulse in, just a little shock to the system. So if this is a circuit, I put a little voltage in, and I take the voltage away real quick, like something from a momentary switch, and I observe the output, h of n. If this was a mechanical system, maybe this is a beam, and so I strike it very quickly with an impulse, right? I just strike it and I observe, you know, how how it um, vibrates or how it's deformed. That's H of N. H is literally the response to the impulse. So I conduct this experiment and I see, okay, in this example, this is what I get out when I put in an impulse. That's H that's given, that describes the system. Now I want to know what do I get out when I put this in? And see, I can figure this out by just doing this mathematical op operation known as convolution without having to analyze a circuit or without having to analyze a mechanical system at all. I just need to do the convolution. Okay, so let's do it. So I'm going to try to evaluate this sum. So I know that y of n is this sum. k goes from minus infinity to infinity of x of k times something. But notice that um, x of k, right? when we plug in values for k, x of k is going to be 0 for most of the values of k, except for when k is 0, x of 0 is 0 0.5, and x of 1 is 2. So really, there are only two terms in this sum that are non-zero. So for this particular example, I'm just going to go from k goes from 0 to 1. x k minus or times h of n minus k. All right, and I'm going to expand the sum. And when one of your signals is short in duration, like x n is short in duration, like 1, 2, or 3 samples, then it makes sense to just expand the summation. So this is x of 0 times h of n plus x of 1 times h of n minus 1. Okay, so x of 0, as we said, we look over here, x of 0 is 0 0.5 times h of n. What's h of n? Well, h of n is a sequence. It's a signal, right? This this whole thing here is h of n. Plus x of 1. x of 1 is a constant. It's 2 in this example. Times h of n minus 1. Well, what, what is h of n minus 1? That's a, a signal that's delayed h of n by one unit. Okay, so this is what we have now. This is our output. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, and so let's let's kind of work on this a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw h of n, just right underneath it, just a little bit more crudely, I guess, quickly. All right there's h of n. Just copied from the top, from what was given to me in the problem, and then underneath it. Oh, actually, I'm going to scale it then by 0 0.5. I have 0 0.5 times h of n. So zeros multiplied by 0 0.5 remain at 0, and the 1s times 0 0.5 now becomes 0 0.5. Okay, so that's now a height of 0 0.5, and I'm going to label this as 0 0.5 h of n. Then I'm going to delay h of n. This is h of n by one unit, so that would be like this, right, this is now at one, two, three, because I'm delaying it by one unit, remember n minus one has the effect of delaying by one unit. And then I have a two here, so I'm going to scale everything by two, so the ones become twos and the zeros remain zero. So this is 2 times h of n minus 1. So the output is simply the sum. So I'm going to draw a plus here. The sum of these two signals, point by point summation. So what is that equal to? Well, I've got zeros here up until the origin. I have 0 0.5. So this is 0 0.5. Right, plus zero. And to the left of the origin, I just have zero plus zero, zero plus zero, zero plus zero. So I have a bunch of zeros. Okay, now at sample one, I have 0 0.5 plus two. Okay, so that's 2.5 at one. And at two, I have two plus 0 0.5. So I have 2.5 at 2. And at 3, I have 2 plus 0. So I have 2 at 3. And then everything after 3, I have 0 plus 0 again. OK, and that's it. That's the answer. So notice. From this guy here, <clears throat> this was, our answer is actually a sum of scaled echoes of the impulse response. So this is, this is a scaled impulse response. This is a scaled delayed version of the impulse response. So the output, the output is a sum of scaled echoes of the impulse response. It's always going to be like that. In, in this example, this is what I get. Okay, not too bad. Now, we're gonna re, we're gonna stay with this example, but I'm gonna give you another way of of looking at um, or calculating this example. Okay, and both methods are going to be helpful to us later. What I can do, and you see, go back to the definition of convolution. I've got this infinite sum over k. So what you can do is plot each signal versus k. Right? And I'm going to make a plot of h and x versus k, and I'm going to plot them right on top of one another, or right um, yeah, on top of each other so they line up. So now I'm going to say this is k, and I'm going to plot x of k. Okay, well, all that is, I mean, you can call this n, you can call this k, whatever, but all it's doing is replacing n with k. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it k now. So here's 2 at 1. And this is 0 0.5 at 0.
right? So this is x of k. All I'm doing is calling the independent variable k instead of n. Now, I look in my convolution sum, and I see that k appears as minus k in h. So what I'm going to do, right underneath x, I'm going to plot h of minus k. And again, what we're doing here is I'm giving you a second way of evaluating this convolution. So I take h, and yeah, I can replace the n's with k's, and, and I get the same thing. But now I want to flip it because I see that it's h of minus k in the, uh, in the convolution sum. So when I flip it, I get 1 at 0, and then I get a 1 at negative 1, right, and a 1 at negative 2 and then zeros and then I have zeros over here and this is again this is h of minus k and what I'm what I tried to do here is um, draw these it helps it helps in the calculation if you can draw these right on top of one another so they line up Okay, so I've got x of k. All I did was replace the n's with k's. Then I've got h of minus k. I replaced the n's with k's, and I flipped it. Now, observe, again, the convolution sum. If I want y of 0, then I plug in uh, 0 for n, and I've got k goes from minus infinity to infinity, of x of k times h of minus k, right? This is with n is equal to 0. I'll write that here, n equals 0. Okay, so x of k times h of minus k. So that's, that's this signal, x of k, times this signal, h of minus k, right? Point by point multiplication of the two, and then add add the result from minus infinity to infinity and that gives you y of 0. So y of 0 is an, is a sum of all of these multiplications just to get one value, just to get y of 0, that one value, right? We're going to we're going to keep track of this. So here's n, this is going to be y of n. So just to get the value at 0 requires multiplying this whole signal by this whole signal and doing a sum over minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so what do I get when I multiply? And this is why I, I wrote them right above each other. This signal, x of k, by this signal, h of minus k. Well, all the zeros, you know, multiply to zero, including the one at one here, right? There's a zero there, so this two is wiped out. And the, the only non-zero overlap I have is at the origin, right? I have 0.5 times 1, which is 0.5. So in this sum, there's only one term that is non-zero, and that is 0 0.5. Okay, take a, take a second to pause the video and make sure you agree with this statement here, that y of 0 is 0 0.5. So I'm going to append that to my plot. Okay, now, let's say I wanted y of minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to plug in minus 1 for n. Okay, so this is the n equals minus 1 term. Now, x of k remains the same, so this plot still applies. But now I've got h of minus 1 minus k. So, so here's h of minus k, and when I subtract 1 from the flipped version, that, that has the effect of moving the graph to the left by one unit. 
Okay. So what, what happens there when I do that is I get a zero here at the origin and this becomes the one here. All right, imagine taking H, flipping it, and then shifting it to the left by one unit. That's what I get here. So now you see there are actually no regions of non-zero overlap. I get zero times something for every sample. Zero times one, zero times one, zero times one, zero times 0 0.5, zero times two, zero. So all of this is zero. There's no non-zero overlap. So y of minus 1 is 0. And if I, if I shift this thing to the left by 2 units, or 3 units, or 4 units, or 5 units, I'm going to get 0. So that is to say, for n less than negative 1, I'm going to have 0 as well. Okay, so this continues on. Now let's try y of 1. So I plug in 1. For n. Okay, so remember, I'm going to erase this. I've got a lot going on here. And I'm going to redraw it. Now remember what we did with h, we flipped it. And now that n is 1, I want to draw h of 1 minus k. So we're flipping it, minus k. And then we're shifting the flipped version to the right by 1. So what I get, so imagine this flipped and then shifted to the right by 1. So this becomes 1, 1, 1, like this. So this is h of 1 minus k. Okay, so now according to the convolution sum, I do a point-by-point -point multiplication of x of k with h of 1 minus k, and then I add all those multiplications up. So when I, when I multiply, look at I've got 0 times 1, which is 0, so all this is 0. Then I have 1 times 0. 0.5, which is 0. 0.5. Then I have 1 times 2. Okay, so I'm just going to keep track of the multiplications here. I have uh, 0. I have 0. 0.5. I've got 2. Then I've got all zeros. And so, so the point-by-point point multiplication gives me this, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then when I add all of those up, I get 2.5. So y of 1 is 2.5. So we'll draw that here. Okay, let's continue. Let's plug in 2 for n. So according to the convolution sum, this goes from k minus infinity to infinity, x of k, h of 2 minus k. All right, so I'll draw that. Okay, that looks like this. So again, um, you want to think about what does what does h of 2 minus k look like? So imagine this graph ends replaced with k's, flipped, then shifted to the right by 2. So that's this is the graph. So now I keep track of the point by point multiplication. I've got 1 times 0 0.5, so that would give me 0 0.5. I've got 1 times 2, right? 2, then I've got zeros. And when I add up all of those things, I've got 2.5. 2.5. So y of 2 is 2.5. So I'll put that here. y of 2 is 2.5.
Okay, let's try y of 3. Hopefully you get, you're getting the hang of this. y of 3. So I want to draw the flipped and shifted version. Okay, so this would be h of 3 minus k. Again, imagine flipping h and then shifting it to the right by 3 units. And now, the only thing that I have that lines up, the only non-zero overlap, is 1 times 2 is 2. And everything else is 0, right? I've got 1 times 0, 1 times 0, 0 times 0. I've got 0 times 0 0.5. 0 times 0. And when I add up all of those things, I just have 2. So y of 3 is 2. Okay, and then imagine shifting this again. All right. Shift it by 4 units. Okay, if I shift it by 4 units, this is h of 4 minus k. Now look, I've got no non-zero overlap. Zero, point, uh, 0 times 0 0.5 is 0. All these things are zeros. All right, this is all 0. And so when I add up all those zero, all those zero multiplications, I get 0. So y of 4 because I shifted the plot by 4 is 0. And if I shift this thing more, I still have non -zero, or no non-zero overlap, so then I would have zeros out this way. Okay, and so we compare this plot with what we got previously, and uh, they're the same. And this, this second way seems to have taken a lot longer. However, for for other examples, this method might be the shorter method, so it's important that you have uh, both methods under your belt. So we can conclude from this second method that convolution is a series of is uh, a series of flipping and shifting. Right? That's all we did. Sh flip and shift. So we took h, the impulse response, we flipped it, h of minus k, and then we shifted it around. And and really all we did then was we, we did a bunch of multiplications, and then we added those multiplications. So it's flipping and shifting, and then it's multiplying and adding. There's really nothing difficult about that. So... Um, you know, you just need to practice that. But we'll look at some more examples.